Welcome to this week's edition of The Real Deal. Now today is the day where we ask the question, are you okay? And now that I've asked you the question, and I certainly hope you are okay, I'm going to answer the question for you. Am I okay? Well, yes, I am today, but there are some days that I am not okay, along with many others in this industry, and I'm gonna talk about why. Well, first up, if anyone knows anything about real estate, it is a very tough industry. Only 10% of all agents even make it. And out of the 10% that make it, there's many that don't really earn much money. In fact, would you believe that there's many that are doing better on JobKeeper than they were actually doing as agents? I find this really heartbreaking because they work such long hours and put so much into it, but yet many of them are earning way under the hourly wage if they were working somewhere like McDonald's. Okay, why is this? Well, you only get paid on settlement. And when you take on a listing, you don't know how long it's gonna to take to sell. Some of them sell really quickly. Some of them sell slowly. Some of the contracts fall over. They crash on finance. They crash on pest and building. It's not the agent's fault if there's a crack under the slab or if the property has termites, but yet the agent has to still sell it over and over again with the stress of their conscience knowing that there's something wrong with the property. Do they disclose? Don't they disclose? There's a lot of moral issues which also add to the stress as well. So you only get paid on settlement. Now the second thing is that you've also got to find properties to sell. Now that sounds easy, doesn't it? But how many people do you currently know that have a property that they're about to put on the market? And if you do know them, certainly uh, contact me. I'll give you a spotter's fee. But yes, you've got to find the listing. Now the listing's a little bit like a job interview. So you've got to be lined up along with others, particularly if you don't know the person who's selling the house and it becomes a job interview. You get asked lots of questions, you get put through your paces um, and they choose you not always on merit, sometimes for really strange reasons. And uh, I always say I get the business I'm meant to get and I don't get the business I'm not meant to get. And sometimes you're chosen um, based on what you think a property's worth. So sometimes Pete, there's the whole moral issue is do you tell somebody what their property's honestly worth? When they tell you that they want 700,000, you really know deep down inside it's not worth anything over 600, it's probably at the most worth 620. Do you tell them that or do you give them a false hope? You know, there's a lot of moral issues and if you're an honest person like myself, you frequently could lose business by being honest and then you're up against someone who tells lies and doesn't even put prices on anything. So it's quite a stressful industry to be in and if you don't get the job interview or you don't get the listing, you can also be quite hard on yourself and then you've got to ask the question as to why didn't I get it? Now, if you don't get one, that's one thing, but what if you don't go for two or three in a row and you don't get any of them? You know, that can play havoc with your self-esteem, with your mental health, and for that reason, many real estate agents resort to, sometimes, self-medication. We're talking alcohol, we're talking drugs. Don't think drugs don't exist in this industry. You would be horrified and mortified if you knew how prevalent drug abuse is in this industry. Why do you think agents talk about Thirsty Thursdays and, 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 and um, you know, constantly talk about alcohol? Um, because I guess, it's such a stressful industry, that's what they resort to. And the third thing, of course, is many of them have a string of broken relationships, um, probably because of the hours they stay away from home, the hours they stay away from their family. Some of the top agents in the country are on their third and fourth marriages. It's very sad, but it's a reality of this industry. So as you can see, you know, we're all humans and, and it's not always okay. You have a lot of disappointment, you have a lot of expectation, there's a lot of stress. What can you do to make this industry better? Well, I would say just by being appreciative of an agent for their time, not being overly demanding, understanding that they are people too, that they're away from their family on a weekend to show you a property. Don't be demanding lots of after hour inspections because it's just not practical. You know, agents have to eat as well. They also have homes. They also might want to do some shopping. They might even want to do some exercise and don't send them SMSs after 7.30 at night. It's a complete no-no, eight o'clock maximum cap it. Uh, there's nothing worse than lying in my bed and it's 11.30 and all of a sudden it pops up. I'm requesting some information um, on this townhouse at this address. And I'm like, seriously, this is my mobile phone. So these are some ways that you can certainly make this industry a lot nicer.
for agents. Be kind, be appreciative, smile at them, thank them for their time. They don't get paid to show you a property unless you decide to buy it. And don't be entitled. I think we can all make the world a better place by just being considerate and kind to those around us.